Hey, Green Machine friends and fans of fun. I've lost my glasses, so that's why I look different. And everything's blurry. It sucks. But we're going to do this anyways. Uh, at least I can read, which I've always been thankful. I don't need glasses for reading. That's amazing. Uh, first book on the list for this week is The Immortal Hulk, which, uh, look, it was nominated for an Eisner. It's pretty well deserved. I gotta be honest with you. And this does not disappoint at all. Uh, I'm trying to think of how much to talk about without spoiling too terribly much. Uh, we knew the Devil Hulk was not the normal Hulk. And we have it confirmed in this that it's something else. And that that is tied to Bruce's father, but might not have been Bruce's father. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you know anything about the Marvel Universe, you know that there is an entity called the One Above All, and there is an opposite one that has always been hinted about. And we're not talking about Mephisto. No. So, so, yeah. They, we actually learned about that in this series, right? In this series, yeah. So, yeah, that's being expanded on. Uh, they've changed more of the Hulk mythos for, for the better, I gotta believe, because it seems a lot better. Uh, they've introduced a lot of new stuff. There is just so much going on with the Mortal Hulk every issue that you just... It's a lot to absorb. Uh, the writer is just amazing. Uh, the art is, is so gorgeous. Like, they've, they've really... Like, man, it's, it really is... I, I call it the Rolls Royce of comics, and for good reason. It's amazing, so go pick this up. I, and I don't care, DC or Marvel fan, like, go grab this. It's good. Um... Next is TMNT City at War, and well, uh, we were dealing with all of the clans coming together to fight, and then uh, Casey's girlfriend, who uh, I, I think she's Purple Dragons, I think is what it is. I can't, I can't remember and keep all the clans straight. Anyways, she was shot in the last issue and dying, and so they were trying to cure her with um, not the mutagen, but the green ooze that has like healing stuff uh, that is tied to the mutagens. It, it was like a source of. Uh, how they made the mutanimals, which were humans that, that became mutants. So we we might see a new mutant, sort of, a new mutanimal. And uh, uh, honestly, it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cool. I can't spoil it, but I really think you should go pick this up if you're a TMNT fan because, uh, oh, man, I really want to spoil it, but I can't. Should I spoil it? No, no, I, should. I shouldn't spoil it. So go pick this up. It's good. Um, next, we're going to talk about Test. Test is in number one, and uh, this is, well, it was a weird one. It was, it was a really, really weird one. So, let me see if I can't break this down. There is a person who is dressed very punk and has, I think, has implants of some kind, some kind of military implant or something. It is implied that she can do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, she is tracking something that she's been clued into. Something. Oh, and she has a, she has something talking to her, which I'm assuming is an AI. But uh, she's been tracking something. She knows of a town that vanished in North America, and the town was used as a test bed to test the future. So yeah, I, I I'm intrigued. I want to know where this is going. I I have to tell you that up front and be up front. I didn't really like the art. I, I was not, uh, the art did not sell me on it. It wasn't really great. It felt, it's like watercolors, but it wasn't my favorite. Um, but the writing is really great. Uh, looks like Hickman. Okay. The writing is really great. I don't know. I would say pick this up if you want to try something new, if the concept interests you. Um, but if you, if you are a really, 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 really bad art snob like I am, you, you might not have the best time. I'm just going to give you that little warning. Uh, otherwise, th the concept is great. Um, the person, the main character is not quite human either. Um, she stitches herself up. Uh, at one point, she was in a prison with somebody else, and she was like, they were randomly stabbing each other for fun. That's weird. But uh, super intriguing story. I, I want to know where this is going to go. Yeah, very techno punk. So, I learned that there's something called solar punk. I hate the name, but I kind of think it's cool. Like, there are people that do like seed bombs, and they're all about like uh, environmental, like saving the environment, but doing it in a futuristic way. No, and that's why I hate the name. 
Because it's, it's like, ever since Cyberpunk, people add punk to stuff and they, they assume it's a thing. Steampunk got away with it. Steampunk is a thing. You know, we, we all accept that. It's fair. Um, but calling everything else punk, like neo... Yeah. Neo <laughs> new primordial art punk. And I think punk, I think like CBGB, I think some like gnarly sounds and like a whole little subculture to go with it. But, but it happens. Like, like every yeah. year there is... There is some new genre, some new creation, and people will add punk on it. Last year, I can't remember what it was. It was like some future happy punk of some kind. And like uh, author Nick Mamatis was like taking aim at it and like laughing at how ridiculous it was. And it was like, it was really just two authors pushing their this new genre they created that, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I wish I could remember the name because it was such cheese. But uh, anyways, uh, sorry, we're going off on tangents here. Um Next, we're going to talk about the world of Black Hammer Encyclopedia. As this is stated, this is an encyclopedia. It lists the different characters in Black Hammer. It lists locations. It gives you details on it. It tells you who was involved with those locations. It's, it's pretty much a who's who. If you are someone like me who used to collect monster manuals in, in, in your past, D&D uh, &D monster manuals, or you like that sort of technical thing, like I love wikis you know I, I very obviously like cataloging data and information this is a really cool read so go check it out and you need to read this anyways because uh the black hammer dc crossover is coming soon and i can't wait to see what happens with that it could be so uh really go pick this up especially if you're a dc fan and you're going to jump in on that you probably need to know this uh, next, we're going to talk about... I keep moving the mic because I'm not comfortable with where it's at. I'm sorry. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Zero's Journey. I don't review much manga, which, by the way, there is a DC Comics manga in our system that popped up this month, and I noticed it like two days ago and was like, what is this? So, yeah, we need to look that up in a bit. Um, in the meantime, uh, I don't read manga much, and this is the Nightmare Before Christmas manga, but it's in comic form which I guess is a thing. I didn't know this was a thing. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, we've had it for a few months. It's actually pretty good. This, this one centers around Lock, Stock, and Barrel, who are the kids who work for Oogie Boogie, and they're hanging out with Zero. And meanwhile, they find themselves hanging out with a bunch of Christmas elves who are having too much fun. And the head Christmas elf, I, I don't know what his name is, he comes down and he decides they've been having too much fun, and he sings a song to them and hypnotizes them. All of them, including Lock, Stock, and Barrel. And then he's got them, like, making toys. Only Lock, Stock, and Barrel suck. So that doesn't turn out well. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. I, I was actually really intrigued with this. Um, I hadn't read any of the other ones. But as somebody who loves The Nightmare Before Christmas, which I do, um, I, I had a really good time with this. So go pick this up if you're a Nightmare Before Christmas fan or a Disney fan. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to talk about Lois Lane number one. No, we're going to take a break because we're getting a phone call. And we're back. Uh, mischief managed. <laughs> uh, okay, I haven't played too much of the Harry Potter game. Uh, okay, so this is Lois Lane number one, and she uncovered the most dangerous secret in the DC universe. What was the secret? I don't know, but you're going to have to go read this uh, to find out. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. The art is uh, a little too gritty for me. Um, let's see what else. They, they do some, some current political statements by referencing some current political figures, which, uh, you know, may or may not sit well with some people. Um, and then the other thing that they keep referencing that I didn't really like is uh, currently in the DC Universe, a uh, picture was released of Lois Lane. Lois Lane's pretty famous in the DC Universe. Uh, the picture showed her kissing Superman. Now, um, everyone in the DC Universe knows she's married to Clark Kent. So they all think that she's cheated on him with Superman. And while she doesn't seem to care, like people... People ask her about it, and she, like, jokes and stuff like that. Uh, Clark is getting a little insecure about it. So, yeah, that's been going on. So they, they're dealing with that in this. I don't like how they're handling it. Like, at one point, somebody walking down the street actively calls her a slut, which I, I get what they're trying to do, but in this current age, like, 
I, I, I don't think that would happen that way. And, and that's kind of, you know, a little offensive. But okay. Okay. I get what they're trying to do. Um, the, uh, I, I don't know. Well, at least the cover kind of looks like a noir. Yeah, the cover looks cool. Uh, I, I understand what they're trying to do with the story. Uh, I'm hoping it ties into the Leviathan because it says uncover the most dangerous secret in the DC universe. I would assume right now that's Leviathan, but I'm not sure. Um, or Perpetua, maybe. Yeah, it could be. Um, either way, so Lois Lane, number one, it's it's okay. If, if you like sort of noir type stuff i think you might be comfortable with this if you like a good detective story you might be comfortable with this if you want something with a little bit of politics in it you might be comfortable with this if you oh, oh one thing that was cool in this is the question makes an appearance and he makes an appearance really well and i do have to say too the dialogue in this story is really good uh i i thought the writing was really good it's just the art didn't sit all that well with me but you know i'm picky so lois lane number one that's that uh, next is the Prodigal Son, and we assume that this centered around Franklin Richards, because it was Prodigal Son, but it's not it's not Son, it's S U N. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. Weird. So it centers around Kazar and a space alien I've never heard of. T Rex? Not <laughs> really. He fights a T Rex at one point. It was I, I I gotta be honest, the story was all over the place. Uh, it was it was really weird, a little confusing at times. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. It just it felt like they were cramming a lot into this issue. So uh, I, I don't know. If you're a Fantastic Four fan, you're probably pretty comfortable with this. If you're a Marvel fan, I don't I didn't hate it. Uh, you know, if you like Kazar, if you like Conan, that sort of thing, then you're probably pretty comfortable with this because it takes place in the Savage Lands. So go pick it up. If you like that, it, it, this is kind of a throwback to like the Kazar stories, is what it feels like. So obviously, if he's in it, so so go pick this up then. Uh, next is a book. Well, I have not hid how much I love this series, and I don't think it's gonna change at this point. Like, so uh, yeah, oh, the Punisher. The Punisher. Huh? Oh. Maybe I like him. I don't know. Wearing a hat. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, I love this. I love this for a lot of reasons, uh, except for one scene. There, there's a scene where Punisher makes a statement against cops who are rocking his symbol on their bumper and, like, rips it up in front of them, and I didn't like that. I'm sorry. I don't like that. I understand that the uh, guy who originally created Punisher does not like the fact that, that cops and soldiers uh, like the character because it's supposed to be, like, showing that the system was broken and that's why he had to rise up the way he has. I get that. But, uh, I'm sorry, as a soldier, um, there are times where we've wished we could be the Punisher. So, and we haven't, but that, that's why we like the Punisher. So, I didn't like that statement. That statement sucked. Uh, can I, I, I said the A word. Sorry. Can you bleep it out? Yeah. Yeah. We, we can bleep it out. It sucked, but, and I can say that, uh, that part of it sucked. The rest of the story was great. It's 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 the Punisher you know. It's Rosenberg's Punisher. It's it's the same guy who wrote Punisher War Machine. Uh, the same guy who's written the last twelve issues. Uh, you're gonna expect more of the same, um, which is a really really good character that that shows almost no character growth at all. <laughs> like he never changes. Like if you if you trust him and you're a bad guy, that's your bad. And that's never going to change. And that, that, that happens multiple times, you know, that, throughout the series. But uh, The Punisher, I love it. Go pick it up. If you're a Punisher fan, if you like action, go pick it up. Uh, if you like good art, this art sings to me. Uh, go pick this up. Um, yeah, yeah. So Marvel fans, go pick this up. DC, if you want to jump in on The Punisher. This is actually a really good jumping off point. Because they just finished the Begalia arc. We had like one issue with the last issue, which was sort of filler. And now he's in New York. So it's a good time to jump in. Next is Arrow. And this, well, we're not even going to hide the fact that this is, I mean, it's a Shanghai hero, but, but the art is super anime. I mean, super anime, like way over the top anime. This is, this is comic manga, which is a manga comic. It is, right? Yeah. So this is, this is essentially Marvel's manga. And 
it's good. I had a really good time with it. Um, one of the things I liked about it was she was talking about like her, the, her first time flying and that she used to have dreams of flying. Anyone who knows me knows that I dream of flying like all the time. So I, I really like this character. I like what they did here. I love the art direction. I, I had a really good time with the art direction. Um, and it's not entirely that. There's a sort of a side story at the end about Arrow and Wave. And they do it in the more traditional sort of uh, comic style. So, uh, yeah, go pick this up. It's a good showing for a number one. Um, and we, I think we've got plenty of copies, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're a little deep on that yeah. Next is a story that I, I've been hard on Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. Because uh, for a bit there, it turned into a real sort of slice of life story, which wasn't what I wanted from Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. I wanted a lot more action. And, uh, well, we I've got my wish. Because there was a ton of action in this. Um, she's been having issues with her suit, which her suit is a symbiote suit, which is a bunch of spiders that sort of jelly spiders that come together. And that's what she calls them, jelly spiders. And they haven't been acting right. She's kind of been losing her powers here and there. So she goes to Earth 616 to find Eddie Brock. <laughs> because the other person that helped, helped her was a Brock, was, a, was a, I think Eddie Brock's ex-wife or something. So she goes to find Eddie Brock in this world. Because that, that always works out for spiders, you know, going and messing with Venom, going and poking the bear. But uh, that doesn't happen in this issue. What does happen is we get a totally good adventure with uh, 616 Spider-Man. And, I, I, okay, tiny spoiler. I'm gonna this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. I'm going to do it, but sh it's been in the news She's in 616 now. This is her issue where she goes to 616. She's transitioning to our world and she gets her secret identity back. And she also fully accepts the name of Ghost Spider in this issue. So this is a really important issue to go on. So go pick up issue 10, Spider-Gwen. If you are a Spider-Gwen fan, you will be totally comfortable with this. Uh, next is Thumbs. And we need to talk about Sean Lewis because... Uh, Sean Lewis, uh, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes at a comic shop, but a lot of it is very, very thankless. Um, we get messages from Diamond Comics. Uh, that's about it. We got a thank you message from Sean Lewis for ordering uh, the first two issues of Thumbs, which I, I mean, one, I don't, I don't know how he got our email, but uh, two, I'm, I'm pretty thankful that he did because it was a really heartfelt thank you message. And uh, it, it showed that the... The writer and artist really put a lot of themselves into this story and are really hopeful of it. And it shows. The art is really, really good. Uh, you, you guys know I don't like gritty, but this is almost comic-like gritty is what it feels like. It's, it's a very wild sort of style. Um, the story centers around like a world not unlike ours, but where tech has, has grown up. So there's, there's AI. Um, there is people plugged into the network all the time. People even joke, but like they, they walk up on an alley full of people that are all like plugged up and like connected online. And they're all joking. Like, like, did you know that people used to have privacy? Like, like nobody in this world gets that. And, uh, meanwhile, there are people called powers, which the main character was one at one point. And they're just basically, um, people who get souped up abilities in the real world. Um, yeah. So it's sort of setting the stage. It's, it's very clearly a um, cyberpunk dystopia story. Uh, there's some mysteries to what, what's going on to the main character and why the main character doesn't quite remember everything. Um, but I, I had a really good time with this. Um, so yeah, Thumbs, go check this out. It's only $4.99 and issue two, it's, it's not too late to get in on this. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Batman TMNT. And, uh, well, let's see. This is issue three. So, quick recap. Batman's universe got folded with the TMNT universe. So, not unlike Infinity Wars, uh, the current one where, uh, who is it? Gamora folded oh, the Infinity universe Wars. on itself? Yeah. Warps. Well, no, Warps was the, the comic title. Infinity Wars was the event. So, anyways. Um, uh, so, this is not unlike that. They folded the Batman universe on the TMNT universe. Only it doesn't suck. Because uh, <laughs> I, I did not like that Infinity Wars event very much. Um, so there are changes. The Robins are all actually TMNT characters, and you can pick out which Robin they are. Uh, meanwhile, Bruce Wayne is their brother, uh, adopted brother. Splinter was acting very Alfred-like. Uh, we come to find out that there's way more to this origin story than this issue. Um, his parents weren't gunned down. 
Uh, Joe Chill drove the truck that dropped the mutagen and ran his parents over. Is that in this issue? That's in this issue. Oh. It's just the very beginning. Oh. It's okay. It's not a major it's, spoiler. It's, a major spoiler. Um, it's the very beginning. But uh, the rest of it, it, it plays out pretty nice. Um, we did have one of the cool things about this series was they had the OG Raphael. And I'm not talking like Raphael from the, the Archie series. I'm talking the OG black and white Raphael. And he's drawn black and white. Like, there's, there's really legitimately no difference. He argues with the turtles while he's black and white. And that's really, really cool to see. And, and he's, he's drawn in that style. I loved it. And they're going up against Krang the Anti-Monitor. <laughs> that's, that's really <laughs> I really love that creation. Um, anyway, so uh, Batman TMNT, it's issue three, but I, again, I don't think it's too late to jump in on this. These are really, really, really good. I'm having a fun time with them. But uh, I, I think you have to be a, a DC or a TMNT fanboy. Both preferred. Uh, otherwise, you're probably not going to have a good time with this. Next is Hashtag Danger. We, we took a chance on Hashtag Danger, and that was because Ahoya Comics, we got, what was the world's one? Uh, the two, two worlds? Oh, yeah, uh, Wrong Earth. Wrong Earth, that's yeah. what it was. And where they had, like, a, uh, it was basically Batman, but the character was called Dragonfly, and one was from the gritty world, and the other one was from the campy, like, Batman 66 world. Yeah. And it begins with, like, the two villains driving a vehicle to, like, launch the other one into the other world. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of wild. Uh, so I had good hope for these Ahoy comics because they're pretty good. This one, um, it was okay at best, and that's, that's probably being nice. It's a really sort of cheesy story that is, it, it, it felt less like a comic and more like maybe a Mad Magazine type story. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe a really, really campy Archie story. Uh, keep in mind, they, they curse a lot through this, so it, it seems to want to be adult, but it, it feels like 80s kid, more like. And, uh, and that was, it was divided into three-part stories. I, frankly, I mean, it's issue number three. I knew nothing of these characters, so may, maybe you can take my opinion with a grain of salt. Uh, the end of it, though, made fun of agents, which was kind of weird. Like, clearly the writers have bones to pick with, like, Hollywood agents, I guess. Oh. Or maybe writing agents? I don't know. Um, no, yeah. So it was... Mm, it was okay. It was okay. Um, if you're hurting for an Ahoy Comics title, which you very well might, because that, that Wrong Earth was amazing, uh, this is really worth checking out, I'd say. Um, I, but if you're anyone else, if you're anyone else, I, I don't think this is the issue to start with. Maybe go back a couple issues, and maybe it'll sing to you a little bit better than it did for me. Uh, not my favorite pick of the week, though, I gotta tell you. Next is Savage Avengers, which was just outstanding. We, we need to talk about uh, a lot of stuff. So I don't normally like gritty-drawn comics, which this one's pretty gritty, but I'm digging the art. And I think they did it that way intentionally. It, it feels like a mix of Punisher art crossed over with, like, Wolverine and Conan. Like, it's very, it's a good kind of gritty. Uh, who else do we have in this? We got uh, Brother Voodoo is in there. Um, Venom the symbiote is in this. Is in this. Uh, and and seeing Conan with with Wolverine like is so entertaining. And they they really are just the best team that we never knew we wanted. And and this issue is no different. There is uh, again for I think the third issue in a, in the row. There's beer jokes. Um, <laughs> There's, there's really unique ways to use Wolverine, which we've seen that for two issues. And it happens again in this. So I really don't want to spoil anything for you, but if you aren't reading Savage Avengers and you're a Marvel fan, I'd have to ask what's wrong with you at this point because it's great. It's really, really good. I'm having the greatest time. I, I laugh out loud, I don't know, two or three times while I'm reading these yeah. issues. So it says a lot. Oh, go figure. It's Jerry Dugan. So, <laughs> oh, okay, uh, pretty good. Uh, next is Superman up in the sky. And I think I was the most excited for this book because I, I don't hide it. I'm a pretty big King fan. Uh, I know other people have a bone to pick with him, but I love King. And more importantly, the art, uh, the art was really, really good. Um, it was cool seeing King write Superman. Granted, Batman pops up in the story. So it centers around a mystery where a family was murdered. Uh, and they had like, I guess the, the family had four foster kids. 
and two of them were killed. One of them was dying in the hospital, and another one was missing and taken up to space. So, pretty much, Batman goes to Superman and says, look, you need to go to Ron and see if you can't figure out, like, where these people, like, teleported to because they have the same tech. And meanwhile, you've, you've got to do what I do. And th that's literally what he says, do what I do. So, I, I love the way it's written, and, and we get the Tom King Batman in just the tiniest dose, and it still feels perfect. And I'm liking his take on Superman, too. Like, I'm having a really good time with this already. So, uh, Superman up in the sky, go check this out. It's $4.99, which it's not cheap for a DC comic book. But uh, I gotta say, it's worth it. Our next book is Adventures of Super Sons. And this is number 12. This is the wrap-up. I haven't hidden how much I loved Adventures of Super Son. I had a really good time with it. And, and that's why it kind of breaks my heart to say I didn't like the ending. I didn't. I liked every other issue leading up to the ending, but the ending uh, was not my cup of tea. It was very sort of, it felt rushed, and part of it, for some weird reason, felt like it was referencing Secret Empire and <laughs> the Marvel event. Really? Yeah, it was, I, I don't know. I Granted, I know that there are a lot of cosmic cubes in comics, but... <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't know. I, d I was not happy with the ending. Everything else about this whole run was great. Uh, everything from Space Cabby to the, uh, the villain kids. Yeah, and, and they did just the right amount of cheese that mixed well with Jason... Uh, sorry, uh, Damien... I almost called him Jason Todd. <laughs> Damien Wayne and, uh, and uh, Jonathan Kent. Um, and granted, there are still... When these two are, like, interacting in this issue, like, at one point, Damien's, like, making fun of Jonathan, and it's just, it's right. It's perfect. It's how it should be. So, I didn't hate it. I just, it wasn't the best rap. That's all I'm going to say. I got to chime in about it, man, because we watched these guys, these Damien, was it Damien, too? No, Damien's right. Sons. Yeah, Damien, yeah, Damien. Yeah. Damien and Jonathan, like, go ahead. They're good. They were, like, the buddy cop. Stories that was up it's exactly what it is, Space it Buddy Cop. And then now in mainline, well, they went and ate everyone and turned everything all different. That was a great dynamic, man. For it to peter out like that makes me sad. Yeah, I mean, it's not... Mm, it just... The wrap-up wasn't as strong as the rest of the issues. That's all I'm going to say. It didn't suck. Nope. It just... It was an ending. Ah. <laughs> So, well, let's talk about something else that, uh, well, it's the Year of the Villain Justice League number 27. And Lex hasn't gotten to his offer yet. They've been stalling this out. His offer is in the next issue. I'm sorry. It's not in this issue. However, um, everything else about this issue is great. Snyder is, is just magic. Snyder is a magician. And when he writes something, it's, it's just so good. So we, we dealt with the fake world, and now we've got one of the brothers that helped forge the universe. Uh, I, I, think his, I think his actual name is World Forger. Um, so he's, he's on the Justice League now. They go to... I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and they're, they're chasing... Yeah, you can blooper that out. They're chasing, uh, they're chasing Anti-Monitor, and basically, they're trying to rally the troops so that they can save the universe up against Perpetua, and per Perpetua? Is her name Perpetua or Perpetua? I think it's Perpetua. Somebody needs to tell us how to pronounce that name. But, um, you know, it's, it's just a good showing all around. Like, I'm never bored with Justice League. I always have a good time. I, I won't tell you that this is the strongest of issues. It kind of centers around uh, Martian Manhunter's almost obsessive hunt for Lex. Um, but it's, it's a pretty good showing. I, I, think, I think coming on the, off the heels of that two issues back where we had the Superman three-generation punch, yes. where it was like Jonathan Kent Jr., the, the son, and then Jonathan Kent Sr., the, the, the granddad, and then Clark in the center. That, was, that felt so good. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so uh, coming off the heels of that, uh, nothing's going to feel as strong, but this is still a really good showing. Uh, oh, oh, it's not Snyder on this one. Wow, okay, well, you know, it is what it is. Why is it not Snyder? Okay, uh, sorry, um, brain breaking. 
Anyways, uh, Justice League is a pretty safe bet for any DC fan. It's, it's pretty good. Now for a comic I was really critical of and probably should eat my words. And that's uh, Green Lantern, the Grant Morrison run. Now, if you don't know, I, I was super critical about the artist. I, I did not like the art. And granted, I mean, he's an artist who is heads and tails above anything I could ever do. So me being critical of an artist is, is I, I just, it didn't appeal to me. Uh, however, the story is amazing. And this one centers around, um, it centers around a fantasy world. And uh, basically, Green Lantern's got to navigate a fantasy world, so it's all swords and sorcery. And I really can't say more without spoiling that, because I will. Apparently, I will, because I've been talking a lot about spoilers. But it's a pretty good showing. If you like D&D and you, like, uh, you, you love this Grant Morrison Green Lantern run, you'll probably have a good time with it. It's sharp. The artist is sharp. I, I don't know. His art doesn't seem to me. I'm sorry. Um, but the rest of this is, uh, it's a good showing. And I had a good time with, I think, the last two. I think I read the last two and I had a really good time with it. It was just the beginning. I was not having fun with it. So, uh, issue number nine, Green Lantern. Go pick it up if you're a DC fan. Next is Secret Wharfs, the Soldier Supreme Annual. Because we needed this? <laughs> so, that kind of, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, annuals are for things that keep going. <coughs> I don't know. I apparently the Marvel execs had a really good time with uh, Secret Warps and th their new Secret Wars event, and they had fun with it because I didn't, and I was not happy to see this. And uh, I reviewed it, but uh, look, <laughs> I. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. And that's me being nice. I think that the Secret Warps gimmick is played out, and I'm tired of it. And granted, it's it's almost entirely the same characters. There's, like, Arachnite. There's Soldier Supreme. There's uh, Iron Hammer. Uh, Weapon Hex makes, it makes a cameo. I... Eh. It's... It's what we got with uh, the uh, Infinity Warp or Secret Warps books, the Infinity Wars event. It's the same thing. So, well, in, in Marvel's defense, the Soldier Supreme was the more superior of the titles. But... Yeah, Soldier Supreme was good. I liked it at first, um, I, and I liked Iron Hammer too. But everything after that sucked, and I didn't like it. Um, <clears throat> So this is kind of the same thing. If you liked it, okay. I got really tired of it and burnt out on it, and it just wasn't my jam. So we've got this, though. Come pick it up if you, if you want that sort of thing. Um, next is Space Bandits. And, well, did you ever want 80s sci-fi that takes place in space and not just, like, Blade Runner cyberpunk? Did you want this, Yogi? Yeah. Yeah. It was on my Christmas list. I didn't know I wanted this, and apparently I totally did. Uh, let me let me tell you how this opens. Let me tell you. The 80s didn't reach the Midwest until the 90s. Think how long they took to get in space. And then it shows the starship Lionel Richie. <laughs> so I, I, I loved it. I had a good time with it. It centers around a, a gal who is betrayed by her gang and winds up uh, in prison, and another gal who... Uh, get this, this is kind of inventive. Can, should we talk about I'm, I don't care. I'm going to talk about it because it's a first issue. I think this is really inventive. Um, so there is a bounty hunter and... and uh, no, a bounty hunter and his girlfriend, and his girlfriend has a bounty on her. So she goes and she turns herself in, and, and the bounty hunter turns her, turns her in, collects the bounty, and then f goes and breaks her out. And then repeats this process, so they just keep getting richer and richer. So I, I I'm not gonna say how that turns out, but uh, you can bet that that probably turns out sour. Uh, anyways, so Space Bandits, this is a, a great showing. I had a good time with this. I, I thought it was great. Uh, I just noticed the Netflix on the back. Have you seen this? Is that <laughs> one of their titles? <laughs> That's what I was wondering, because it doesn't advertise anything. It just says Netflix, and then it's like. Space Bandits. Maybe. That's weird. That might be something to look it up. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Um, 
but it's Mark Millar, so so what you're gonna get is you're gonna get really good writing out of this, and uh, I, I don't really know Mateo Scalera that well. I don't I, I don't know the artist that well. Um, maybe I should because the art was was gorgeous. I had a great time with the art. It was just the right amount of grit and just the right amount of fun. Um, uh, the the stylized choice I like that I, I didn't know I wanted to see the 80s in space but I really really did um, <clears throat> oh oh you have no idea like they they show <clears throat> at one point they show some of the characters in like different outfits mm -hmm. and like it, it goes from like Cindy Lauper to like Molly Ringwald to like wow. <clears throat> yeah it was pretty cool so I I had a really good time with this and I, I mean you should go buy this if you like sci-fi. You should go buy this if you like 80s. But more importantly, if you ever said to yourself that you just wanted to see a spaceship named Lionel Richie, you should buy this issue. That's an image comic. It's an image comic. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, good showing from image. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, next is Star Wars Target Vader. And, well, there's a bounty hunter in this. Have you heard of this bounty hunter? Uh, let me get his name because maybe you've heard about it. Uh, Baylert, Baylert Valance. Baylert Valance. I don't know that I like the name. Baylert. It sounds too much like Bert. He might be the one that found, uh, No, 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 he's this guy. He's this guy with, okay. he's, he's got Terminator face. He, he, he fell asleep one day on his computer and he woke up with Terminator face. No, that, that's not what happened. <laughs> it's a crazy origin story. I got a keyboard on my face. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> did you say pee on your feet? Yeah, it cures everything, don't you know? <laughs> I don't know. Um... Okay, so his, it's Baylor Valance, and uh, they're, uh, he's a bounty hunter. He's pissed off a lot of the bounty hunter guilds, so a lot of the other bounty hunters are moving on him. So he's got to take them out, and meanwhile, he's got a contract, and that contract is, guess who? Vader. Look at the title. Whoa. Target Vader. Wow. Whoa. So old T-1000 face has got to go hunt. That's not T-1000. That's Arnold, right? Yeah. Uh, Which one is that? T T-80. T T, is it T100? No. T, T80 is trash 80. That, that's, that's a computer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyway, so old bounty hunter ter Terminator face has got to go hunt him down. And uh, this is a, actually a really good showing. I had a good time with this. And I'm, I'm usually pretty overly critical on the Star Wars books. Um, because some of them were uh, a little dry a while back. But there's been so many good showings lately. So if you like Star Wars, you will be perfectly at home with this. And more importantly, we get new Bounty Hunter Terminator face. And uh, you, you're going to want to know what this guy's doing, even though he's got a ter terrible name, Baylor. Uh, <laughs> uh, next is Operation Overlord, St. Mary Glace. And this is my unit, the first of the five, well, not the first, the 505th of the 82nd Airborne. Uh, in Operation Overlord in World War II. And this is pretty much the, uh, the story of D-Day and the invasion, which took place H-6. And so it centers around our paratroopers jumping into enemy lines, uh, a little bit of their backstory, but this actually comes from a book, which is a bestseller. So uh, <clears throat> obviously we're a little biased in this store, being, being that the two owners are uh, both paratroopers. But I loved it. I had a really good time with it. Um, the art is, is really good. I mean, I, I have to tell you that for, for a, a war comic, the art felt right. It felt a lot like um, the old Sergeant Rock type, type stuff. Um, the story was pretty good. At times, you can tell that it was a novel and it was sort of condensed into comic form. So at times, it felt a little bit rushed. Um, but I had a really, really good time with this. But I think... I, I'm very biased, you know. It's it's clearly we like soldier stuff, we like army stuff, and this was pretty much as paratroopers. This is one of our finest hours. So that's in comic form. So if you like that sort of thing, you're a history buff or something else like that. Uh, you'll have a good time with this. T800, not T800, not not trash 80, not 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 the Radio Shack computer. Uh, <laughs> so uh, how funny would that be? 
<laughs> Come with me if you want to. <laughs> it just locks up <laughs> the Radio Shack logo. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, next is deceased number three. And this is actually the uh, variant. The uh, And this centers around pretty much... So... If you know anything about Darkseid, you know that he's always hunting, or he was always hunting, the uh, anti-life equation. Um, he found it in this story, only the equation was tainted. And the tainted equation got out, so we have a techno-hybrid uh, biological virus that can be spread by bites, and it can also be spread through technology. Um, <clears throat> which is all types of problems. So, uh, this, this one picks up after pretty much Batman and most of the Robins have been killed. Damien is still alive, and it centers around Superman trying to rescue people and figure out what to do. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but your best detective down, it sucks. It sucks. Although, I, I gotta tell you, Alfred is pretty dope in this issue. So, I, I was, I was kind of happy with that. Um, yeah, so, uh, DC number three, I'm still having a really good time with this. This is, I, I mean, you know what to expect here. If, if you liked Marvel Zombies, you're probably going to love DC. So, yeah, it's a good showing. Go pick this up. Plus, we have some of the horror variants. I think we have one of them. I think it's The Conjuring this week. No, The Nun was two weeks, two weeks ago. That's the face being half. Yeah, that's the one. No, no, no. This is The Conjuring. No, it's The Final Destination. No, that's from last week, the last one. No, the nun one was the f first one. This, this is The Conjuring. <laughs> I'm telling you, this one's The Conjuring. <laughs> oh, okay. Go look up the variant and put the variant on screen. And, we'll, and, and put it next to The Conjuring poster. And then if I'm wrong, I'll be gloriously wrong. Can you do that? Oh, okay. So we'll do it. Um, the last book on our list is Sea of Stars, and this, a father, a son, and a whole lot of space between them. Aww. Aww. So this centers around a father and a son who are on a spaceship, and they're going to do a job, and meanwhile, they're shipwrecks, and they've got to find each other in space, and I can't think of a more nightmare scenario than this. Um, however, it's, it's a pretty good showing. Uh, there's some cosmic fun. Um, it's not... It's got a little bit of fantasy in your sci-fi, is all I'm going to say. But uh, now that I know that it's a father and a son story, that's kind of sweet. Uh, and, you know, it, I had a really good time with this one. I, I really got to tell you, I'm, I'm kind of underselling it right now. But the art was good. The story was fun. It, uh, it doesn't quite feel like Robinson Crusoe in space because, you know, they're not just trying to survive. They're trying to find each other. But it does open with the shipwreck. So it does feel like... I think the title is appropriate. It's a shipwreck story in space. Um, so, yeah. And who wrote this? Stephen Green and Rico Renzi. Oh, Jason Aaron wrote it. <laughs> I was looking at the bottom. Jason Aaron wrote it. That's why I'm having such a good time with it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Sea of Stars. Go go pick this up. This is a good showing. Um, and I guess that's it for the week. What? what? That's, that's all of our... Okay. Yeah, that's all of our reviews this week. So it was pretty good. Um, I had a good time. I, I got to tell you, there's there's not many comics out this week that I didn't have a good time. <laughs> there's a couple that I didn't like the art, and that's just because I'm picky. Sorry. Like Let's do our drawing. A minute left. <laughs> a minute left. We can make it. We can make it. All right. Ready? First drawing is 229. That would be... Casey DeVargas. Casey DeVargas, you want a poster. 188. Uh, Jasper Singh. Jasper Singh, you want a poster. And 230. I think it Messiah clicked off. Farouk. So we just have sound right now. Messiah Farouk, you want a poster. Oof. And that's our show for the week. If you're just hearing me right now, it's because our video clicked off. Sorry. Dance! <laughs>